the oligodendrogliomas. So the typical one is a grade two. Uh, these account for about 4% of those primary tumors. Peak incidence is, is in the 40s and a little bit more common in females. They occur also more commonly supertentorally, uh, perhaps only supertentorally. Uh, but the unique thing about them is they are more commonly seen closer toward that cortical uh, border near the cortex, which is probably why they more frequently uh, present with seizures. So an imaging for oligodendroglioma. So this looks a lot like that other grade two tumor we looked at, the grade two um, astrocytoma. So again, very well demarcated, uh, non-enhancing, so dark on T1, but uh, bright on the T2 sequences. But here, this is a very good example of how these oligotumors seem to get right out to the peel surface. And again, um, you can imagine how these are very ir irritative to that uh, cortex. So histologically, the oligotumors, the moderately hypercellular, some mild pleomorphic cells, tumor cells have round oval nuclei, speckled heterochromatin and perinuclear clearing. Those are halos. And that's what gives this so-called fried egg appearance that you uh, will see on your board exams. These tumors have calcifications in them. So uh, you might, uh, if you suspect an oligo, go back to that original head CT and see if you see evidence of some uh, calcification. You will have this chicken wire vasculature uh, in these tumors, uh, which is common for oligos. And then you'll see these other um, histologies. Um, if they have significant mitotic activity, vascular proliferation, necrosis, then of course you're talking about the anaplastic oligodendrogliomas. So uh, here's a picture of what these look like. And this is an example of how it gets right out to the pia. So here's the pia, and you can see this dense collection of tumor cells right up next to the pia there. Here's a good example. Uh, of what those cells look like with the, that halo effect, giving you that fried egg appearance. And you also, if you kind of step back, you can start to appreciate a little bit of that chicken wire um, vasculature. They have calcification, like I mentioned. Immunohistochemistry, there's no marker that differentiates them perfectly from other uh, tumors. Um, these also can express G, F, A, P, and S100. Uh, the KI67 is, is lower, consistent with grade two. Uh, they're rarely associated with any sort of uh, hereditary syndromes. As far as their genetics, so you probably have heard about uh, chromosome one and 19 uh, Q deletions. So chromosome 19 is the most frequent alteration. Uh, it consists of a loss of heterozygosity on the long arm of chromosome 19. So in other words, it's deleted. That incurs in most of uh, oligotumors and uh, may represent a uh, tumor suppressor gene. Chromosome 1 is the second most frequent alteration. And similarly, um, the short arm of that chromosome gets deleted. It also occurs in a lot of these uh, tumors and again, can represent uh, possible tumor suppressor genes. So in contrast to the astrocytic tumors, loss of chromosome 17 uh, P is, is rare. That's where TP, TP53 is located. Um, likewise, uh, overexpression of EGFR is also um, common. Okay, prognosis uh, is similar to the grade two tumor um, as far as the meaning overall survival being several years. Uh, the tumors that have the loss of chromosome 1P and 19Q are going to be associated with increased sensitivity to chemotherapy, so they're going to have a better overall uh, prognosis. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.